I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this off like an infomercial. Do you not wanna pay $400 for a Diabella Star engine? Well, you don't have to, because we can play Fire King on a budget. And the way to do that, actually, and I think one of the more fun ways to do it, is the Tri Brigade build. And this build is uh, definitely still competitive. It's still one of the stronger builds. It may not be as powerful as a Diabella Star build, but of course, it's also a lot cheaper. You're not spending like $300 on a Diabella Star engine or like $400 if you're Canadian, right? So in today's video, we're gonna be doing Fire King Tri Brigade. And uh, if you guys wanna see a full combo video, I do wanna separate the combo video from this video though, because there's different combos you can do depending on the hands that you guys see, because there's different hands. So so for that reason, I want to separate it. But if you guys want to see a comment video, let me know in the comment section down below. Last thing, just before we get into the profile, I do want to say big shout out to Aurora YGO. I was taking a look at Aurora's channel and when I was like essentially researching this build, figuring out how this works and how it all synergizes. And Aurora's video was one of the first that I watched and I really liked Aurora's video. So for that reason, I kind of tweaked it up a little bit. It's not the exact same deck list, but uh, I just wanted to give a big shout out because it did give me the inspiration to play the deck, right? So with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. We are starting off with three legendary Fire King Ponics. Uh, this essentially is the best normal summon in your deck. Of course, special summoning this, you get the effect off as well to search. And it's really important because this is part of your recursion as well, right? So three Ponics. We're playing three Kieran as well. And the reason for three Kieran is because this is kind of like a hand trap for you. One of your power plays and it helps you OTK, right? It helps you put bodies on the board. The level eight is really important as well for your extra deck now. So three Kirin. And then we're also playing two of the Sacred Fire King Garunix. Uh, he's kind of like the same reason as Kirin. I just like playing three and two. I think this one's just a little bit better. These are the ratios for the new Fire King monsters. Oh, as well as one of the uh, Rangbali. Rangbali is cool. It's a negate for you, which is nice, but it's actually not as important in a lot of your combos. So that's why we're just playing the one. And then for the older Fire King names, we're playing two Barong as well as one Arvada. And the reason we're playing these ratios is because Barong is actually really important in a lot of your combos. Arvada, yes, is a negate, kind of like Rangbali. I believe Rangbali is a spell trap and this is a monster negate. This is a little bit different, but it's really important for a lot of your plays as well. So that's it for the Fire King monsters, but we are playing, of course, some Fire King spells and traps. So we're playing two Sanctuary, two Fire King Island, one Skyburn as well as one Circle. And the reason for these ratios, honestly, is Skyburn is good, requires some setup though. So it's one of those cards that you don't really wanna draw into. You search it if you have all your other pieces. Same thing with Circle of the Fire King. These two I think is very important to be playing. You could up this to three. The reason I'm not upping it to three is because I guess in a pure Fire King build you would, but in this build two is perfectly fine to Island as well. These ratios I find are, are really strong, really consistent, and they don't clog your hands because you do need to see a mix of tri names, Fire King names, and then some of the non-engine as well, right? So that's it for the Fire King engine over here. It's the monsters and the spells. We're not playing the Fire King trap, not required, I don't think, for this build. But for the Tri Brigade monsters, we are playing three Fractal, three Kit. These cards are the most important ones because these are your Fire Tri Beasts, and that's what synergizes the most with the Fire King monsters. But of course, you have three Nerval as well as two Keras. Now, I was playing two Nerval as well as a one for one for a while, and I kind of want to just show you guys why you can play one for one and two Nerval. It's because your Ponyx is a level one. So the nice thing about one for one is you can go either into Nerval or into Ponyx. I just wanted to give you guys that option if you guys want to play two Nerval and one one for one, because then at least this way you can get this out of your deck as well. But I just feel like you get really hard punished by Ash, and you don't want to get hard punished by Ash. So that's why I'm on three Nerval instead. And then lastly, just one Revolt. You search this as part of your combo, and you're always going to be ending on like Apple revolt with some of the fire king stuff right even though apple revolt is pretty standard for tri brigade the fire king stuff gets you resources keeps cards in your hand and then helps you push on the following turn which is really nice right so that's it for the tri brigade engine um i guess it's pretty standard i wouldn't say it's anything different than typical tri brigade builds are and then for hand traps we're playing three ash and three imperm uh this is kind of all we could fit you can only really fit uh the six hand traps but they're just the most generic uh hand traps you guys can be playing of course with a build like this one you guys can swap out like imperms for like nibs or drools depending on the format and i just think these are the most generic ones so that's why i'm playing these we're playing three tanky of course for consistency the nice thing about tanky is in tri brigade tanky would typically only be able to search the fractal but in this build you can actually search arvada barong as well as your ring Bali. So if you already have kind of access to Fractal or access to your Tri Engine, you can have access to these now with Tanky, right? So Tanky in this build is a little bit better just because you have more cards to actually search rather than just a pure Tri Brigade build. So that's why I really like Tanky. And then for the 40th card, we're on one called by the grave, of course, you know, just generically powerful card offensively and defensively. So in the main deck, 40 cards. I think this main deck is so powerful. And then I wanna show you guys kind of like what the extra deck is looking like. So. 
Two of the Omen. Omen is really powerful, of course. In your turn one, you're always gonna wanna end on Revolt. And Omen, of course, is a disruption for you. But then, turns two and turns three, you actually kinda wanna make Omen like hard because this can help you go for game a lot of the time, right? And if you send to the graveyard, you can search a card, which is really nice. It's consistency for you. You're playing one of the Fairy Jeet as well as one of the uh, Bear Brum. These are, uh, these are just one ofs because this is all you kinda need once you see your combo the first time. That's kind of it, right? This is going to be able to hit your to your revolt, which is really important. One of the double dragon lords, of course, very standard in tri brigade. Now this card I really like still. I know some people cut it. I still really like this as a link three option. It's good into tier elements or any graveyard decks in general, which is really nice. And it does help you to get into a card like access code, because you can go this into access code. This has 3000 boost. You have this as a kind of like banish from the graveyard. So I do like the one access code. Of course, we're playing the one Amirage for when you need to. It doesn't come up super often, but I think it's still pretty important to play the one of just in case you only see a nerve all right in your hand. And that's kind of how you can get some of your combo started. And then we're also playing one Hida. This could be Sunlight Wolf as well in theory. I'm choosing to play Hida instead. It doesn't really matter. Um, you don't go into it super often. There's very niche situations where you go into it. So again, could be Sunlight Wolf. Could be Hira, kind of up to you. We're playing one IP as well as one Unicorn. Guys, I don't have SP, I'm sorry. If I had SP, you'd be playing SP here instead. I don't have SP though. But uh, yeah, if you guys have SP, don't play Unicorn, play SP. If you don't have SP and you still wanna play on a budget, Unicorn is still perfectly fine. It's still really powerful, right? So the one Unicorn, I would say you still wanna play. And then one Apple, of course, you're gonna wanna end on this all the time. Now for your Ixies monsters, we're playing one Baguska and one Dweller. I think this is pretty standard. Baguska is so good in these kind of link decks because if you're ending on an Apple plus Baguska, Baguska doesn't affect Apple, but then now you have a Baguska on board, which is kind of like really good against pretty much everything else in the format. And then lastly, one of your Garunix Eternity. Garunix Eternity is really powerful. It does multiple things for you. It's gonna get you a board wipe essentially when it's summoned. And then on top of that, one thing that it gets you is that your turn three when it comes back to you and you're trying to go for a game. It gets other monsters back from the graveyard, which is really good and helps you push for game. It's also at 3000 attack, so it's really powerful as well. So that's it for the extra deck. It's 15 cards in the extra deck, of course, like always. And you only wanna be playing one of this because again, you're only playing two Sanctuary and uh, this is a very niche play that you can make. Of course, you can still make in a lot of your combos, but it's not like a play that you're always gonna be going for. And then for the side deck, of course, side deck is always gonna be up to personal preference, as I say in every single video, but I wanna show you guys what a side deck can look like with this deck. 3DD Crow, you can honestly main one if you want to, because technically it's searchable off of Omen, but uh, I chose not to main one because if I'm searching off Omen, I really wanna be able to search a card that uh, is gonna help me win game on the following turn, or, if you're searching your DB Crow off Omen anyways, by the time you're getting to there, they've probably used a lot of their graveyard effects anyway, so I don't think DD Crow would have mattered at that point, so that's why I'm citing it. Three of the draw, very niche into different, well, you know, matchups, it's just auto win, but you don't want to main it because it's not good into every matchup. You want to play one Harpies and two Lightning Storm, of course, for back row matchups. Three D Barrier, of course, just in general is so powerful against uh, just so many decks, right? Menadium, Centurion, any Ixies based decks, Pendulum based decks, etc. And then lastly, three anti-spell. If you guys saw the main deck, we we're playing like no spell cards. So for that reason, uh, you can you can play anti-spell and you're never really gonna be hurt by it. And against some decks, it's just an auto win, right? But that's it for the side deck. That's it for the deck profile. Um, again, shout out Aurora for helping me kind of learn what this deck is like. I, you know, shout out to everyone whose videos I watched, but I just remember Aurora's was like one of the very first ones that kind of helped me understand this deck. And um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We're uploading every single day in the month of December, so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that. Again, if you guys want to see a combo video, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys all for watching. Shout out Alpha for being the best cameraman on YouTube as always. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spankos signing out. Peace.